Morning, ladies and gentlemen, it's Professor Williams, and today we're going to talk about Z-scores. Because we're talking about Z-scores, we all also have to talk about the standard normal distribution. So what in the world is standard normal distribution? It is a standardized curve where the mean is equal to zero and the standard deviation is equal to one. Um, the normal distribution is also a symmetrical distribution, meaning that the same quantity of data falls to the right of the mean as falls to the left of the mean. So the right side of the curve is a mirror image of the left side of the curve. We know it's symmetrical because the mean, the median, and the mode are all the exact same value. It is an asymptotic curve in that the curve runs to the horizontal axis, getting ever and ever closer, but never actually touching. And in theory, the curve runs from positive to negative infinity. One of the most useful characteristics of this curve and this distribution is that we know that the area under the curve is equal to one. So this is what I mean when I talk about this normal distribution or what many people refer to as a bell curve is that if I locate the mean of the distribution, I know that 50% of my data will fall above or to the right of the mean because it is symmetrical. The other 50% falls below the mean and just note you'll see the reflection of that asymptotic characteristic here where we go to positive and negative infinity but never actually touch this horizontal axis. So what is a z-score? A z-score is simply the number of standard deviations that a value of x is located above or below the mean of the distribution given that we have normal distribution or have placed ourselves in a position where normal distribution can be applied and or assumed. So in order to find a z-score for a given value of x, what we're going to do is we're going to take our value of x I'm going to figure out the distance it is from the mean. So this becomes nothing more than the distance that an individual value falls above or below the mean. And we are going to convert it into units of standard deviation. Because of this, we know that if we have a positive z-score, that x is going to be located above the mean, meaning to the right. If we have a negative z-score, then x is below the mean or to the left. Because the z-score is negative does not mean that the value of x is negative. Remember that this z-score is a measure of relative position to the mean. So talking about the mean, what does this really mean? What it really means is that we can now determine the probability for any interval for any value of x so long as we have normally distributed data, which is an incredibly powerful tool and infinitely useful in all facets of statistics. Now, somebody out there is thinking back to an applied calculus class and saying, are you telling me I have to find the area under the curve using math? And I say, no, we have tables for that. So here's an example of a standard normal distribution table. There are many varieties of this available. It's important for you to determine before using the table, what do the areas in the table, what do they represent? And in this case, they represent the area from the z-score back to the mean of zero. So the way that we read one of these tables, regardless of the area, is let's say that I calculate and I end up with a z-score of 
one six. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to begin in the Z column and I'm going to locate these first two um, values. So here I am at 1.1. Now I need to find my six. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to find this column uh, with the six because that gives me 1.16. And I'm going to look for the location where this row and this column intersect. And so now what that tells me is 0 0.3770 or 37.70% of the data in this distribution falls between the mean and my z-score of 1.16. Let's see what an example of this looks like. So on average, a homeowner waters their grass for 4.43 hours per week. We see that the watering times are normally distributed. That's the key that you're looking for. Normally distributed means z-scores means bell curve. We're given the standard deviation of 1.32 hours. And if we randomly select a person and they're found to water for six hours per week, what's the z-score associated with this value of six? So remember, it was x minus mu. So I've simply plugged in my value of x, my value of the mean, and now I need to convert the distance from here to here into standard deviations. My standard deviation was 1.32 hours. So I divide it by 1.32 and I come out to 1.19. Z-scores are generally rounded to two decimal places. So if you got your calculator out, you got 1.189 and change, which rounds to 1.19. So what does that tell me? It tells me that this value of 6 is located 1.19 standard deviations above the mean. And so what that allows me to do now, based on standard normal distribution, is I can find out, I can determine any areas under the curve that I want, above, below, in between, and anything I need, I can find out because now I know where 6 is relative to the mean, and I know I have standard normal distance. So again, remember that using z-scores and normal distribution, or the bell curve, will allow you to begin to find the probability that people water more than six hours, less than six hours, between four and six hours, between six and nine hours. It is an extremely powerful tool and is truly fundamental to your future success as a statistics student. Hope to see you on YouTube.